Good morning, everyone. I have a great video online for you today, I think. My grandkids called and asked me to take them fishing. Perfect. Let's get started. I hope you enjoyed the video. Careful, little Joe. Whoop. You're getting there. You're doing At some least things. it went. Hang on now. This is how you do that. Now watch. Ah. Take your pole all the way down to the bobber and just push it forward a little bit. In this video, I am going to cover some of the basic equipment you're going to need in order to get your kids started fishing. And this may be the very first time that you've ever been fishing. So let me explain a little bit of stuff, and I hope you enjoy the video. We're going to start with the cheapest Tom Sawyer rig that we can find. <laughs> this is a cane pole. And the reason you want to keep these things short for your children is because they, they can become, you know, uh, something stuck behind them that they may not realize there's someone standing there. So keep these things short if you can. You can pick these up at any retail location that sells fishing equipment. And you're, wanna, you're going to want to keep this simple. Uh, we do have a bobber on here. Let me explain how these bobbers work again. If you're new to fishing yourself, there's a push button on top and we have a clip right here underneath. So basically, you just take and push. I'm holding my thumb against the bottom and wrapping the string around the top hook. And once you have that in place, if I can see it there, then you place it on the bottom hook by holding the top down. And if you wrap it, and most of the time it won't slide. But this is how you would adjust the height of the hook in relation to the water. Okay, now if this bobber starts laying on its side, that means you have it set too deep and you just want to slide it down the string a little bit. And you just simply do that by pushing the button and let it slide right down the string for you. And now, hopefully, when it's setting like this, it is ready to be fished and your kids are set to catch the biggest fish ever. Now underneath that I have a split shot sinker. Now these are designed in order to slide across the line. Let me get it up there where the camera can see it. And then you just simply squeeze it together with your fingers and you want that about two or three inches underneath your bobber. And then at that point this is where we're going to tie the swivel and attach the hook okay so this basic operation and this gets them fishing again there's no casting here they just simply let the line go let me get back where the camera can see it and then they're going to be allowed to set this down in the water and again when a fish pulls the bobber down your kids have a smile on their face because the fun is beginning okay now uh, for under under ten dollars and you really do have the minimal amount of gear here. Something that's easy to put in your car and your kids doesn't really care about what you have spent to take them fishing as long as you take them fishing. And I guarantee you the fish don't care. Now we're going to go up to the next step here. I have two varieties. And again, this is all depending on you and your choice. This is, um, Spider-Man pole. Oh, you know they're going to like that, right? But the reel is fixed to the pole, so there's no way that they can throw this off of here. And again, a really short rod in order for your child to be able to control that. And on this, you do have the push button to release the string, and then they simply cast it out. And be prepared. <laughs> when they start casting, you're more than likely going to see this go into the water. So the retrieval method is up to you, <laughs> but be aware that when they are uh, swinging this thing behind them, anybody standing back there or anything else, such as a hat, gloves, you know, I mean, it's probably going in the water with it. But you're going to see some funny clips of my grandchildren fishing here, and I'm going to demonstrate that he, my grandson, will demonstrate that firsthand how this works. <laughs> <laughs> now on the second option here this is the same concept a very short pole 
However, if they outgrow the reel that is on this, this is a Zebco 404, I believe, you can spin this loose and actually put a higher quality reel onto the rod. And they like the length of this, so then that gives them a little bit better capabilities of catching bigger fish, okay? But this is going to work well for you. And again, be prepared because almost always it's gonna go in the water one way or another. <laughs> Now, if your child has never been fishing, uh, there is a simple way to get them started practicing at home. This is a weighted uh, fish lure with no hooks. You can tie this onto their string and they can set out in the yard or set in the, the garage, living room, whatever, and practice casting this thing back and forth. It really does help them because it gives them the concept as to what they need to do once you get to water. Something in here is going to be hungry for it. Right, little Joe? Yeah, kind of like catfish that's yes. really big catfish catfish like We'll catch us maybe this big? Would you like to catch a fish for This big? Like a catfish that's your size! Oh, boy! I don't think that's a six foot shark size. Minimal amount of gear here. And at this point, uh, these are right at $10. So, you know, again, leave, it in, leave that choice entirely up to you as to how much you want to get invested here. The fish and the kids don't care. A very simple tackle box. But one thing I will say here, I consider this a must. These are little side cutters. They are capable of cutting steel, and that's going to become relevant here in just a minute. Again, you're going to need some bobbers. Definitely need some small split shot sinkers. Now let's get to hook choice. Let me set this down. Since you are fishing for pan fish, you want a very small hook. And I'm going to hope the camera catches that. And again, uh, in relationship to my finger, you can see that's not a very big hook at all. The reason you want a small hook is because perch and things like that have small mouths and this is um, what they prefer to bite on. If you get too big of a hook, you're not going to catch them anyway. Okay, now, have another version here. This is a shorter shank, and this is an eagle claw hook. And again, these come in packs of 30, 40, 50, or you can actually buy an entire packet for taking your children fishing. Okay, so <clears throat> the reason these longer shanks in my opinion, are a little easier to use. Hold that up so we can see the difference in height here. Is because when you're trying to get this out of the perch's mouth or the small panfish that you have caught, these longer hooks do aid in giving you a better grip of getting it out of the fish, okay? And also uh, a little easier to hang on to. I will leave that up to you. But this is where the clippers come in, being able to cut steel. Now. If your child is completely new to fishing, you can just as easily just simply cut the whole sharp point of this hook off. They're still going to be able to catch fish, not as easy, but they're not going to get their finger as easy either, okay? So by clipping the steel hook off, they're fishing and have the ability to catch a fish, but a little bit safer. Now, if they're a little bit past that, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. There's a little barb right here. And that sticking backwards on this hook is exactly what allows it to stick in the fish's mouth when they do catch one, so the hook can't come back as easy. You can take these pliers and squeeze that barb shut, and it makes it safer for your child in case they get this into their finger, okay? Because if they get this into their finger and that barb is stuck out there, now you're trying to pull that backwards. Now, another great thing for these clippers, if they do have a hook stuck in their finger, you can clip the steel here and then remove the hook. If it has the barb on it, you're going to want to try to cut the, the sharp point and the barb off. That way you're not trying to pull that back through the skin. All right? That's just a safety pointer because it does happen and it's going to happen pretty quick for them. Okay? 
Now, another great thing to have is just simply a small pair of fingernail clippers. It is great for cutting string and various applications for fishing, and you'll use these more than you think you would. Now I'm going to show you the swivel one more time. I did not illustrate that when we had that up here, but this is simply a clasp that you open, and you can slide any type of hook you choose to through this. And that's, this makes it easier for your child in order to change out baits and different things like that. This end attaches to your line, and it does swivel, so this stuff can actually roll around the bait and things like that without tangling up the line. Okay, and that's the concept behind it. Again, panfish size, very small. Now, talking about bait, another thing these side cutters come in great for, if your child is using live bait, and most kids, you know, they, they refrain from worms and crickets and things like that. But if you're going to use fishing worms, you can actually take these side cutters and just cut the worm to smaller sections that goes onto the hook the uh, bait stealers such as perch, uh, bluegill, things like that. If you put the entire worm on there, you can go through a, a 25 or a 50 count uh, can of worms rather quickly. I mean, they'll, they'll take that worm right off the hook with no problem. So sometimes just simply clipping the bait, put a smaller section on there and allow the child to throw it in. They're gonna have just as much fun and you're gonna not have to run back to the bait store. Now another thing to keep in mind when it does come to bait, if they don't like worms or crickets or something like that, there is a variety of things that you can take along with you that not only do the fish want to eat, but your kids want to eat. So you can have hot dogs, you can have uh, bread rolled up around a hook, fish love that stuff, small fish. Uh, you can have bologna or any type of lunch meat, bubble gum, gummy bears. There is a variety of bait solutions you can use that they don't have to actually touch the bugs and things like that. That may keep, keep some of them a little happier. Now, when you get the fish up out of the water, then things change again. Because <laughs> most kids don't want to touch them either. Now, another must have, I think, is a five gallon bucket. First of all, uh, you can get these now with um, detachable lids and you can thread this thing right back on there. Okay, now I have put a piece of plywood on mine because it also makes a decent seat. But first of all, you can slide almost all of this gear into this bucket and it makes a convenient way to carry this along to your fishing destination. And then again, you can set on it. But the most important reason you're gonna need this bucket is when they do catch a fish, they're gonna to wanna to take that home with them. <laughs> and chances are, the fish will have a name before you get it in the bucket. <laughs> That's part of the fun of it, right? And again, you can pack as much gear as you choose to. Another thing that your kids is going to need is some type of bug repellent. You get out when it's warm outside next to water. I mean, mosquitoes, horse flies, different things like that. And the more comfortable your child is, the longer they're going to want to fish and the more they'll enjoy the experience. And when we're getting to the comfort side of it, you very well may want to bring yourself a chair because if you're comfortable, your kids is comfortable. Now, we made this in order to hold these fantastic fishing poles. That way, when the action slows down on the fishing and they're out playing next to the water, I'm sitting pretty comfortable. Now, a life jacket for your child is something that you may want to consider. They make these now for toddlers all the way through, obviously, to adults but your kids is down next to the edge of the water and sometimes they're not paying as close attention to what they should be doing. And, you know, falling into the water is something that is absolutely uh, happens fast. If you're fishing on a boat dock or out of a boat, then, you know, for obvious reasons, they really do need a life jacket. Again, uh, just passing that along and sharing that with you. And honestly, if your kids have a good time you're teaching them something that may last them a lifetime and something that they may pass on to their children and grandchildren. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I know this is the basic fishing uh, gear that you're going to need to get started, 
but it will get you out there and it will get you fishing and your kids are going to have a great time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Okay, there we go, everybody. And be careful fishing and have fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.